So I, I've been working for CERN and at CERN for the past 18, 19 years now. It's never boring. The, the job is different every day. It's terrible, you don't want to come here. No, 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 no. I, I'm just selfish. Right? It's just the world's greatest place to work. You, you know, we wake up in the morning and you've got these mountains in the background that most people have never heard of, actually called the Jura Mountains. But they're actually quite famous. They're called, they gave their name to the Jurassic period that everybody has heard of because a lot of fossils were found up there of dinosaurs. So here you've got like prehistory from tens of millions of years ago just on your doorstep. But then really on your doorstep, what we're doing here at CERN is we're going back in time as far as you can possibly go to nearly 14 billion years. You have this place, a laboratory that's got thousands of people who are from all over the planet, who are all different one way or the other. They're all smarter than I am. It's a little annoying, <laughs> but it's great. There's no better environment to live in than an environment where people are smarter than you and you're surrounded by brilliant people. And they're all here uh, on their own accord because they want to be a part of something. They want to discover something. And so it's just, it's just a positive and outstanding atmosphere. So getting up in the morning and thinking that you're going to make some contribution to understanding what the universe was like then, why it's like it is now, and where it's going is you know, quite a motivator in itself. So it's never really boring. You do something different every day. But I imagine when you're around a lot of alpha people, competitive people, the top people in the world, which is what CERN attracts, uh -huh. is it good being surrounded by such competitive, driven people all the time? I imagine it could, it could, it could grind you into the ground. Well, just, just those who uh, don't understand that I'm right. Okay, that, that's, those are the only ones I have a problem with. Actually, it's, it's the most important part of science. Uh, the most important part of science is the fact that you have all these other people, and, and on Atlas we have 3,000 people. We all have a chance to look at an analysis, each one, and say there's a problem with that. You're not doing this, this, or this, and this. Each analysis, each bit of, of data, each, each paper that we put out there in the world has survived this, and that means that it's true. Okay, that means that it's been peer reviewed and the, by the smartest people and, and we do disagree. We do have fights and we argue about whether we're doing this right and with what we saw is what we're saying it is. It has to survive that and that's important. Indeed to the outside it may seem as if we're just a bunch of physicists sitting in an ivory tower and all we do all day is think about things and do stuff related to particle physics. That's really not the reality. There's a, a whole world uh, outside that people are exploring in music, in theatre, in everything you can possibly imagine. Skiing, of course, just up on the mountains. So it, we're normal people. No, you, you, you have to be lucky, I think. <laughs> I think I was lucky. Uh, I think that you, know, you have to study hard and go into physics, but you know, if you do go into physics, for example, uh, the chances are, these days, one of the, the biggest fields is particle physics. And if you go into particle physics, this is the place. A lot of, of my colleagues, I've seen them all around the planet over the years. Uh, we, most of us have ended up here one time or another because this is really the biggest laboratory for particle physics. So my route to CERN was a very traditional one, if you like. So I did uh, my A-levels in the UK, and including physics and maths, of course. Went on to do a uh, BSc in physics at Imperial College in London, then did a postgraduate degree at Imperial College, and then came here as a fellow and uh, then a staff member. So it's a very traditional way of doing it. But we, we also take uh, people as young as 15, 16, for like a week's work experience occasionally to follow a physicist or an engineer around and, and get their hands dirty and see what we really do. We have programs for older students from sort of 18, 19 years old where they can spend a couple of weeks here. There are also plenty of people who are engineers or technicians who come over here and, and they're always looking for good people so you can always apply for jobs there. And in addition, there's a lot of programs to bring interns and to bring students. So there's a lot of even undergraduate students who come here and contribute for a short period of time. But generally, people's first experiences long term will be after they've done a couple of years of an undergraduate degree, normally in physics, but also computing, electronics, 
and so on. Uh, and then come here as a summer student, which is a, again something I did as well, and spend a couple of months working on a real research project. So there are different ways of getting here, it depends what you want to do. It's noisy, it's, it's like if you've been on a, a, on a ship, on a, um, you know, across, across the English Channel or something, and you're, you're on, you're on the, the hum of the engines constantly. The Hadron Calorimeter. And then within that, you've got the, the inner detector and the pipe itself. So literally, it's, it's deep within that is where, all, where it's all going on, where it's all kicking off.